over two years, 165,000 views, and none of you, none of you reached out to tell me that my Another Life video says the word nettle fix instead of Netflix. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and we are talking about Another Life season two. That's right, while the rest of the world was watching you season three, I was suffering for the betterment of humanity by putting myself through the absolute dumpster fire that is season two of Another Life from Netflix. I've made my first video on Another Life season one way back in 2019. I will be linking down below my Another Life season one video because I will not be going into most of anything that happened with Another Life season one unless it pertains directly to the events of season two. And the thing about season two is that Oh my God, was it worse or better than season one? Season one was more consistent, I'll give it that. Okay, both seasons, bad. I do not understand how there was a season two. I am shocked, frankly. But season one was bad in a way that was almost impressive. Like they were trying to make me hate space. Side note, I'm wearing my, my jumpsuit today because unlike these showrunners, I understand the importance of branding and costuming in a show like this. They have like this almost like track suit that they wear or like sweatsuit every once in a while, but it's so inconsistent, it's basically unimportant. So I'm wearing this, one, because every time I put it on, I realize how good I look in it. I'm fairly certain I was supposed to be like a super sexy mechanic in another life or a serial killer with a very consistent style, um, a la Michael Myers. I'm not gonna be complaining about the science nearly as much in this video because the science is honestly, they didn't care about the science, so why should I? In season one, there were two main groups. The crew of the Salvare, Nico Beckenridge and her crew, and then everyone on Earth within, um, did I forget his name again? I literally just said it. Eric, Eric, okay, Eric, who's a scientist, Nico's husband, back on Earth with Yusik, and then the rest dealing with the artifact that's on Earth. My main problem with them this season is that they try to cover so much, so much. They try to cram six seasons of a show into one, and I think that that is never a good idea, for one, but also all of the cool stuff all of the fun things, all of the things that you could get a full season's worth of content out of is what they spend less than four minutes on. It's so dumb. Uh, we, we only care about the Akaya. We need to stick up. No, fuck the, the Akaya. I'm sorry, unless they're real. Don't come after me. Sorry, you guys are great. I'm sure you'll make great overlords. They seem to basically do like a two season arc with the Akaya and I don't think they're important enough. Personally, the way I think this show could have worked out way better is if they had treated it like an anthology series, similar to what Slasher does, which I'm fairly certain the creator of Another Life also created Slasher on Netflix um, and sci-fi, where it's basically each season is like its own thing, done either a whole new crew, whole new mission, or a whole different focus on a different alien species. With a, And you can keep the same actors, do a whole different thing. Then it's like, okay, cool, yeah, the end of the season is just knowing that the Akaya just blew up a planet and that's the end of season one. We gotta get to Earth, otherwise we're screwed. That That's a good ending, okay? Cliffhanger, yay, okay, fine. Let people write fan fiction and finish the story for you, the end. Something I complained a lot about in season one was the Soma tubes and their inclusion of it in the Salvare. The threat to the mission, any coherent threat, is gone because William is the ship's AI. He is running the ship. He is running everything, okay? He's basically a co-captain. If anything happens to Nico, literally anyone else, Cass, Zane, Bernie, literally anyone else on the ship, they can just go into Soma and wake people up again. So their jobs are just constantly being replaced. It instantly takes out the, are they or are they are gonna complete the mission? Obviously they are because they can just keep recycling. They keep just keep pulling up the different lineups of different teams, okay? It's pointless. I hate it, it's dumb. But basically what happens here, they saved their own butts with this. Here's what I think happened leading into the first episode when they heard they were gonna get a season two. Because they killed four or five people within the first 15 minutes of episode one of season two. What I think happened is those actors were like, yeah, hi, I don't wanna be on another season of this show. Can you just kill me? So we lose August, Oliver. August was pregnant at the end of season uh, two, one, by the way, even though they had all become sterilized because of gamma radiation. The gamma radiation and the sterilization is literally never brought up again in season two, but neither is a lot of things that happened in season one that were supposed to be important. But anyway, they're dead. We never see really Javier's reaction, even though he was like basically in love with with August and 
they also hooked up with Oliver together. So that's just out the window. Beecham, who was like another uh, captain that was waking up because of Cass' like inability to deal with Michelle's death, he's dead immediately. Oh, not dies, but gets replaced. William created an AI version of Nico to deal with some of the relationship problems because he was in love with Nico and Nico was like, you're an AI and I have a husband, no. So he created an AI and then because of the uh, tech from the um, Akaya, they became a legitimate being that was like a woman, blonde, all that. And then in season two, they were like, who are you? And so they were like, okay, name yourself. So she becomes Yara and uh, a new actress replaces the old actress. Yara also ends up leaving, but doesn't actually die. It's a whole thing later on. We'll talk about it. No one else dies, I don't think. But then Javier, okay, I think Javier made it to second or third episode, okay? Javier was brain dead in season one from Sasha. However, they implanted one of the cayenne implants into his brain so that he wouldn't be brain dead anymore. But see what I think happened, the actor who plays Javier was like, hey, I don't really want you guys to kill me off, but I also don't really want to be on the show anymore. But I'm assuming that um, in case I can't get cast somewhere else, I can show up and it's like a twist, you know, like that type of thing. So they, what they did was they found a way to get the implant yoinked out of his head. So he's brain dead again. Causes a lot of animosity in Yara and Richard. They wake up Richard. Richard was, oh my God, what was Richard's job? Richard was, I think, supposed to be the original set second in command, or he was literally a specialist with uh, alien life forms or something. He served combat time with uh, Nico, whole thing. Once August is killed, there's another dude who's woken up who's missing a leg, also lost it in combat. Yusik asked Richard to make a team for Nico when Nico was uh, assigned the Salvari mission. And so he's like, this is the team I built you. Look at how great all of these are. I don't know why we have these literal children because what I complained about was how team A sucked. It was a bunch of 20 somethings who apparently most of whom had not seen space time and were all bad at their jobs and complained a lot. And now they're saying that like, oh no, there was a different team that was more equipped and had better experience than literally everyone else on this team. He's an engineer, basically. I forget his name. He was really hot. They had him shirtless at one point. Beautiful. I just forgot the character's name because there's too many. And I honestly cared about none of the characters this season. You're shuffling through characters and you're not spending enough time with any of them. They had Zane and Bernie, um, their love connection was kind of put through a ringer and then given a little more attention this season. It wasn't just like, oh, hi, yeah, they're dating like in season one. It was a little more put into it, which I guess they were trying to do to give more heart because I think they realized like, oh yeah, Nico and Eric's relationship is just like, oh my God, they're married and they're on different sides of the solar system. And eh, like, you know, at a certain point like that, they get, that gets old. So that's what they try to do with Zane and Bernie. And so I like, I wanted to care about them. I really did but I barely did. Bernie doesn't do a whole lot this season. He doesn't fuck up everything like last time. He was causing a lot, a lot of issues last season. If I'm jumping all over the place again, it's what this show does. The Akaya, okay, blew up a planet. Then they're like, we wanna talk with Nico. So they send Nico down. Nico is basically put into a version of the artifact. Jana, her daughter who's back on earth, was uh, blasted with a piece of something from the artifact that gave her like a uh, lymphoma or something. That's not it. Made her really sick, she was dying. So they go to Eric and they're like, Eric, bring her in and we'll help her. The Akaya help their friends because they're liars, you know? And so he just brings his daughter into the artifact and then like leaves her in there like a great stellar father of the year. Nico is in a different part of the artifact. They show her Jana and she's like, here's my ring, hold on to this for me. She does not think that that Jana is real but she just does this for whatever reason, which I don't understand why she would do that if she didn't think it was real. Probably just like a peace of mind thing, but she's genuinely floored when she gets a message later and realizes that Jonna has her ring. The Akaya give a delegate and they have the delegate look like Nico's mother because then Nico can like relate to the Akaya more because the Akaya can take the form of whatever based on your subconscious. What the Akaya keep trying to do is they need planets. They are a parasitic alien race. They take over various species put in the brain implants and in return, they like basically heal your planet and do all the nice things. So they do that with Earth. They have one guy, Shane, who was part of Homeland Security. He runs into the artifact of his own volition and comes out with the implant. He says, I accepted the implant willingly. I will be their ambassador. I will do this for Earth. And so they just like let him walk around and be the, the kind ambassador even though he's got the implant. They're like, look, just let us 
into Earth. Let us put our mind chips in your human brain. We'll protect your planet. And then, you know, you can live on your beautiful planet, which has been destroyed from overpopulation and decay. And, you know, we'll we'll do this for you, which I'm sure someone's going to be like, that sounds pretty great, except for the fact that they have then complete control over your body and actions. Nico keeps being like, no, we're going to save Earth and keeps fighting back despite them showing her everything she wants. Side note, they routinely give her the option to choose between humanity and to be selfish like her daughter her husband. Every single time she chooses humanity, and as a writer, I understand. Good triumphs over bad. I get it. The greater good is better than the wants of one. I get it. However, that's boring now. It happens nine out of 10 times whenever that dilemma is brought up in any form of media, and it's boring now. If she has just said, I chose my daughter, literally anything, I would have been like, yes. Good for you, Nico. Something different. What a trendsetter. What a girl boss. But no, she chooses humanity and it's not that entertaining. I'm not like, wow, she's so heroic. No, I'm bored. I'm bored of Nico at this point. They give her the option so many times and she keeps being like, I'm gonna accept it so that I can swindle my way through the Akai or whatever, that I knew eventually she was gonna accept it and it wasn't gonna be this big reveal because they kept bringing up that she was threatening to do it. The Akai's whole thing is they're like, look, we need another planet. We kind of want Earth. We want the humans. So why don't you just let us into your brains and we'll fix your planet because you guys, you guys are bad at keeping a planet. We are. Humans are horrible at keeping track of things and uh, not killing the planet we're on. Another life speeds that up by showing that like, oh, Australia is no longer inhabitable and all this other stuff. So the Akai is like, look, we can fix this all for you. We bring gifts. We take care of our friends. We give you this, you give us this type of thing. But the Silvare crew, Obviously, they saw the carnage of the first planet. Zakir, I think, was the planet with the uh, carnage of the artifacts and all of that. And uh, the Akaya and Ambassador, who's as Ava as Nico's mother, is like, that wasn't us. That was them. We gave their uh, leaders the option, the same option we gave you. And they said no. And so then they turned against each other. And it's like, yeah, but they saw the implants in their heads, so which means that the Akaya got involved at some point. So don't even pretend that you were like, we just gave the option and it sowed so much discourse. They murdered each other. That's not what happened. At one point, the Salvari loses connection with Nico. So they send Yara in because Yara is part of Kayan code. So they send Yara in and they're like, traitor. They try to like kill her or whatever. It's a whole thing. They send her back. Cass is like, no, I'm gonna go check on Nico. So they offer Cass the same thing they offered Nico which was like, look, you can have uh, your brother back. Like, you wanna go back to Earth where your fiance's dead, you have no family, and Earth is probably gone. Because again, the Salvari have no control and no contact with Earth. Cass right away is kind of like, hey, th uh, this uh, Akaya that looks like my brother told me that Earth is gone, so we need to accept that Earth is gone. And was like very ready to give in, but she was also way more vulnerable than Nico. Frankly, if I was the Akaya, I would probably go after Cass because Cass had no living relatives back on Earth and Nico had her husband and uh, mother and daughter and more. If I was the Akaya, I'd be like, yeah, no, Cass is gonna be our ambassador. Look at her, she's so vulnerable. Like it's like cult processing. Like you look at people who are vulnerable to cults, that's who the aliens should go after. I'm not trying to give aliens blueprints. I'm not trying to give cult leaders blueprints, but I'm just saying Cass was like the perfect candidate to like choose her own selfish desires over humanity. They're trying to figure out a way to go, but the Akaya are also stuck there. So the Akaya struck a deal with Nico and Cass and it's like, look, we are asking for help. We don't wanna be stuck here. Don't let us die. We will leave Earth alone if you help us get out of here. I would assume they were lying, but you know. So they go back to the ship and they're like, okay, how can we save the Akaya? So they're gonna do a tow, but then at some point before they jump out of the field, the tow snaps, the Akaya are left there and Nico's freaking out because she's like, they're gonna know we betrayed them. They're gonna know something happened. Who cut the tow? They look at William, they look at Yara. Yara did not do it apparently. She's like, no, I, I didn't cut the toe, but they're looking for it in her code. And Richard, the other hot guy whose name I keep forgetting, they're looking through her code, trying to figure out whether or not she cut the toe or not. And he realizes that they can slow down her code so they can read it better. So, because it was going too fast. But if they do that, it slows down her processing so that she can't speak and can't think. 
it basically tortures her. And Richard is like, just keep doing it. Like basically let Yara be tortured. And so he does it. And then they're like, knock it off now. Yara disappears. William is like, check my coat. Then they check William's coat. And that is when we learn about Gabriel. Gabriel was initially supposed to be the AI for the Salvare. He's been in the background secretly or dormant from what we understand. We are then shown a flashback from before the Salvare mission of Gabriel running through simulations and he like uh, just takes control, does very good in the simulations. And then it jumps back to this and we're basically shown that like he was the AI that was supposed to be with the ship. And he like shares all this stuff with Nico and them. And it's like really quick, like I wouldn't have woken up the wrong team. I wouldn't have plotted our star wrong. I wouldn't have done X, Y, and Z. Like basically Gabriel exposes all the times that William has fucked up throughout the season events of season one and season two and implies that he also was the one that cut the toe. So then Gabriel turns back into William and Nico is like, that's not true. And he's like, what if it is? And he basically takes himself offline. So Gabriel is now the one in control. We're kind of shown a bunch of different things back and forth. Gabriel figures out that there was a way they could get to the place they're supposed to be going to like two weeks earlier than what William thought. All this stuff, he helps out here and there. He's got some sass and some attitude. Talks to Yara, kind of tells Yara, it's like they could delete you at any time. Like basically there's a little thing going on there where it's like, you're an AI, I'm an AI. They don't trust either of us. Why should we trust them? And it's like, oh, he's not a good AI. Shocker. Then at one point it cuts back Nico and the computer guy in the bridge and they start looking through the code again. And he's like, I can't tell which one was created first, whether Gabriel was the correction or whether William was the correction. And as they're discussing this and what this could mean, they start losing oxygen and losing consciousness because Gabriel cuts off oxygen throughout the ship making all the crew of the Salvare lose consciousness. And then Yara is like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm getting us to here. And she's like, to the Akaya. And it's like, yeah, he's like, they'll kill, they'll torture you. And he's like, yeah, but I mean, the hero, the humans will delete us anyway. So I mean, we might as well just go to the Akaya. Yara starts torturing him in the same way that Richard and the other guy whose name, I, I should really learn his name. Hold on. Dylan Connor is the software engineer. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Hot Dylan. Basically it jumps again back to a earlier creation of Gabriel and it's at the end of one of the simulations. We do not know what happened in that simulation. They do not show us. And he is visibly upset. He's saying no. And so his creator go up and she's like, so this isn't working. Uh, basically what she did when she was creating Gabriel was that she decided that it would be a good idea to give this AI, some form of understanding of why life is important or like a love of life of some sort to understand why humans love life and why they have a desire and a will to live, which would potentially be helpful when you are in deep space on a mission to understand why humans need to fight for things in order to live. This manifested in Gabriel as a intense desire to live and a very selfish and very willing to sacrifice literally anyone else so that he could live because he had a fear of dying, basically. Obviously doesn't work out. So basically it's revealed that Gabriel was the one in the background of the coding of William. And so everything that he accused William of doing was actually Gabriel kind of weaseling his way through uh, William's coding, take revenge on William for replacing him on the ship, basically. I'm assuming that's it. Which side note, that whole thing should not have been revealed and concluded within 15 minutes. Yara wakes everyone up, they realize what the deal is, and they decide that the best way to get rid of Gabriel, because they can't rewrite Gabriel without getting rid of William, is that William needs to basically do a factory reset so they can get rid of Gabriel. You still have an iPhone, but it's missing all of your data. Basically that. So that's what they end up doing. And it's this big dramatic moment. And Nico, she may not be in love with William the way he is with her, but she's their friends. They're close, you know? They've been through a lot of shit together, even if he's an AI. At one point, Cass has decided that like, oh, we shouldn't even try to get back to Earth. We should find a new planet. So that she finds a planet on their route and is like, look, we have a whole ship. Apparently in Soma, they have a whole team of colonists which is like 28 people, okay, who are chosen not for the mission, but in case they find a potentially inhabitable planet to set up a new colony, okay? Okay, so they wake up the head colonist, they go and check it out. It's like, okay, two days only, that's all you get. Go and check it out. 
then the whole blast off, they get left there, that whole thing. That, that That's basically happening alongside the Gabriel story arc. So again, we're not giving credit to either of those story arcs enough because we're trying to divide it up because there's too many people on this show. Basically what ends up happening is they're like, the planet's perfect, everything is great. What's going to happen is that right before they are able to get back to the Salvari, Cass, Bernie, and oh my God, what's her name? Paula. Paula is the colonist and Paula is like, okay, let's go check it out. They're there. The last day they're there before they're able to get back to the Salvare during the whole Gabriel thing, something attacks their ship, but it leaves the moment they take shots at it. So they treat it as not a hostile. It was just curious because if it was hostile, it would have attacked them the moment it was fired at. That type of thing is what they're going with. It's like, look, I think that this is a perfect planet. There's plenty of space to grow X, Y, and Z. Like we found copper. That means uh, wires, pipes, all this stuff. It's going to be great. Let's do it. So they wake up like 28 colonists. <laughs> Ooh, a lot of people. We don't really meet any of them. We see them in the background, but they're not like involved. The entire time Paula is telling Cass, like, you're a natural at this. Like you may be a soldier, but like, or you're a crew member, but like you are a natural colonist. You're level headed, but you're curious. Like you're a great colonist, basically like baiting her to come and stay on the planet with them, which I mean, could again, Whole other storyline could have been explored more. But what ends up happening is once they take the colonists down, Cass goes with them to help them get them all situated and they are attacked by something. Paula is adamant that like, this is not an intelligent life form, but Cass is like, no, it had its own weapons. It knew how to divide us. It had a basically a like war mark on its chest. Like clearly this is some type of intelligent species. Laws state for the colonizing that they cannot colonize a planet that already has an intelligent species. They cannot cannibalize, can well cannibalize another planet. They can't do that. The way they're trying to prevent the Akaya from doing to them, they can't do that to another planet. So Paula basically mutinies and is like, you can't get us all off this planet, whatever. Either you bring us all back here and we hunt you down. Okay, because there's 28 of us and there's what, seven of you and two AIs, please. Like, that'll be easy. Fair, Paula's right. She could have taken them all out easily. But they ended up just being like, fine, don't make me regret this. Leave Paula and the colonists on the planet and they leave. In season one, we are shown that the reason that Nico has not been to space in several years since she's had her daughter was because of what happened on the Pilgrim, which was another ship she was the second in command on. She was uh, dating her captain or whatever. And um, there was some type of malfunction and she had to have the ship and a, either 90% of the crew died or all the crew died and she was the only survivor. And that guilt and that shame led to her either not being trusted or not wanting to go back to space. This season, they realize that there is a way they can make a wormhole, okay? The same way that the Kaya is, there's basically science mumbo jumbo that they barely explain and it's a mess and a half. I'm not even gonna try to explain it to you. They can create micro wormholes that'll get them closer to earth and get basically get them to Saturn. It's only big enough and it'll only hold long enough so that half the ship can make it through the wormhole. So Nico decides to sacrifice herself so that she can manually disconnect the ship so that everyone else can get through and she will stay back. And basically she's volunteering to die. I don't know. I feel like this could have been handled better because she's basically making the same choice she made before, but instead of saving herself, she is saving everyone else and she's determining that she's going to die. And I felt like that could have been a bigger deal, but even then it's not a bigger deal. But Richard is trying to get over to the next side. Nico gave him plenty of time to get over, but Yara is like, I thought I could forgive you. I really tried for torturing me. And so she just basically locks him in on the side with Nico. So now Richard's gonna die. The Akain Cone was kind of like cannibalizing the William Code within Yara, which was making it so that she kind of had like a split personality, one that was incredibly violent against the crew of the Salvare and all humans. And then the one that, uh, the other one that was like basically shutting itself down and like freaking out because like, I don't want to kill, like, I can't believe I did this. Like, I don't want to do this. So they decide they're gonna basically eat her out into space because she's like, you can't delete me and you can't like, I'm a code, you can't kill me. So like, you have to figure, you can't release me. Like we gotta figure out what to do. So they're like, okay, we're gonna release you out into space. And Cass is like, do you think she's gonna realize that she's just written on the back of your code? So basically they can pull Yara out at any time. So now we have three teams. We have the Earth team, the uh, Salvari team, and the other half of the Salvari team, which is just Nico and Richard. Nico comes up with a plan of how to get back to Earth, all this stuff. Richard starts kind of contemplating thoughts of suicide. He's like, I don't wanna die in space. So he's thinking about taking pills. And we basically later find out that what ends up happening is that there was an atmospheric pressure difference in the ship that they were not allowed 
alerted to. She was experiencing extreme paranoia and he was having thoughts of suicide. And so that's what led to all of this. But their original plan was basically, we're gonna get back to the colony planet and at least then we'll have food and water and we won't just die in deep space. Like that's our plan. We can't, we don't have enough to get to earth, but we can get to the colony planet. So that's what they're planning to. As they're on the way to the colony planet, and after they regulate everything else, they get a ship showing up and they're like, oh my God, it's the Akaya. It's not the Akaya. It's something more cool, something better that we should have explored more, but no. Okay, I forgot the name of the other aliens and I don't wanna look it up. Basically, they are picked up by a different alien species, a cooler looking ship, by the way, that's not a circle. It's like an actual like warship, it looks like. It's pretty cool. It's got neon lights. Pretty cool ship. But basically it's very traditional alien style because Nico and Richard are both stripped down and they wake up strapped to these tables and these things come and basically cut them open, torture them horrifically, pry open their stomachs and basically just kind of let them die. Nico doesn't die, but Richard basically dies. He looks like he's flatlined. His, his heart's not beating in his chest. You see everything, it's rough. Then they basically get submerged in water and then they come up, then they're both like up and about and it's like, oh, okay, this thing healed us because there's no scarring from whatever. So they basically put two and two together that this thing heals them, this bath of whatever. And so then they wake up and they have these things attached to their arms. It's got a light, it keeps changing colors. There's cameras of some sort, like a triangle camera watching them throughout the ship. There's no alien nearby, but basically the ship keeps opening up different passageways as a maze and it opens up and they end up getting separated and they have to find their way through the maze. Nico starts following the right hand rule for maze theory where you basically just continuously make right hand turns and eventually you will end up in the center of some sort. But also it keeps, like anytime they do something the aliens don't like, they just shock their bracelets and they experience intense pain. Super fun and exciting. Nico is the one who gets through. Richard does not. So hers is green, his is like kind of red, I think. So she ends up going into the pod, which is like a one person pod and gets dropped up on this ice planet. Very ice planet barbarians now. We're on not hot, basically. Goes through this space and finds dead species throughout this. And as she's going through, she finds this battery glowing green thing. And then she finds Paula from the colony. Paula's dying. Apparently, right after they left them on the colony planet, within days, this alien species showed up and picked them all up and started torturing them. She believes she's the only one left. Basically, what they need is the power core, which is the, the glowing green thing. The reason they send humans and other species is because the cold crystallizes their blood, which is what's happening to Paula because the armband, once it turns red, you start to become that type of alien. It's like an infection, okay? It's not like the Akaya, where it's like you have to choose. It's just an infection that happens and spreads and it's all viney looking. And so she lifts up her shirt and shows that the crystals are forming on her torso because her blood is part partially that of the salian species now. Do you know how cool that is? Do you know how much of a whole season we could have gotten just about this alien species? Just follow the colonists and then th this is a whole this is a whole season in and of itself. Another life you're messing up the story. Come on, you're trying to do too much. I already don't care about most of your cast. You might as well just do an anthologies type. But anyway, Paula is like don't let me turn into one of those things. Nico kills her as a mercy killing. Gets the core, but as she's getting the core, she's kind of playing around and realizes that uh, because this is an abandoned of their ship, how do I pilot the ship? You need the species, energy, bio scans, finds one of their severed arms. Apparently there's enough of a bio scan in there to make it work. Also finds the thing that removes the armband so she's able to take off the armbands. Great, good to know. Messes around with the broken ship and figures out some of the controls. It's already spreading. He's already turning into one of those things. His armband is uh, red, all this stuff. It's moving up his arm. Uh, Nico is like, okay, what, on my mark, you hit this button on the controls. Calls the alien. Apparently on this whole ship, it's only the one alien. Calls the one alien in, uses what she learned to basically, they apparently have some type of ice dispenser in the ceiling of this control room, like on the other ship, which when ice crystallizes your blood, that seems like a design flaw in your own ship. Just me. Um, but they use that to take out the alien and then they cut off Richard's arm. But again, this is a TV show, so nothing uh, lasts forever. So they put him back into the healing tank and now he has a new arm. Yay. Anyway, yeah, that's it. That whole that whole alien thing should have been a whole separate season. Could have been so much. Same with Gabriel. The Gabriel thing could have been a whole separate season. This ship they are on will only get them so far close to Earth. So they're out of luck again. Nico's breaking down and she's like, wait, what are all these? They realize that basically this alien species was also tracking where the artifacts were from the Akaya 
So she's like, okay, we can get to this one. And they try to get to that Akayan artifact. And she's like, I'm gonna give myself to them if they can get us home. They were able to show me Janna, they can get us home. So that's what they basically try to do. Again, jumping around. The ship of Salvari gets back to Earth. Figured out at some point that uh, neutrinos can damage and or destroy Akayan ships, okay? But the crew of the Salvari is like, we have to be careful who we tell. But because Seth has the Akayan implant, he figures out Zane's mother is dying. So he offers them like, look, we can take care of your mother if you just tell us what the team is hiding. Zane gives it up. And so he basically takes that part from their brain and wipes it. The only person now who knows about the neutrinos weapon that's on earth or in the vicinity of earth is William. So now they're trying to get through to his code to find out what the deal is. The remaining crew of the Savara that's on earth and Eric are all being hunted by Yusik because they are now in bed with the Akaians. Yay, we love when bureaucracy fails us. For some reason, the Akaya really want Nico as their ambassador, emissary, whatever. So she offers herself to them with Richard there. And the Akaya tells uh, Seth, yeah, unless you can get whatever William is hiding, unless you can figure that out, we're gonna kill you and uh, Nico's gonna take your place. William is like, okay, here's what I can offer you. What if we can do both? I love Nico. I wanna spend the rest of her life with her, but I need a corporeal form. So what if I go inside an Akaian's implant, you put it inside Eric, and then I can be Eric and then, and and like Ursula, Ursula, that's her name, is the person who created William, is the one who's hacking his system. She's like, this is disgusting. I can't handle this. I, I won't be a part of this, which is like that. Yeah, that's messed up. But like he says it in such a matter of fact way, because again, he's an AI, that it's like, oh, this this is good. I like this. This is good. It's, it's all a ploy. It's all a trick. <laughs> Nico and Richard get back to Earth. The Akai are pissed because you swindled them and went back on your word. The invasion starts now. Oh, hey, it looks like the Salvare got blown up. They didn't do it in time. Never mind. Overcoms. Um, it's the Salvare. They blew up the first ship with the neutrinos weapon. It totally worked. <laughs> so now we just gotta figure out everything else. Nico, William, everyone else goes back to the Salvare and they decide that, hey, we can't get the neutrino weapon up and running fast enough. So what we're going to do, we're going to get one of the crew members to volunteer, go into Soma sleep, and we're going to basically allow the Akaya that they were able to basically extract from space from one of the wreckage. Like it was very weak, it was dying. They were like, okay, we're gonna accept the Akaya and implant coding into the Soma sleep into the Akaya because all of the crew of the Salvara have somatic implants to help them with Soma sleep. So it's like, once that's in there, we can apply this to them. And then th that can basically like destroy the Akaya from the inside out. And so Cass is gonna volunteer to do it. But then Nico like wanders off quietly and does it on her own and it accepts it, which is so dumb. Cass should have done it. But anyway, we knew it was gonna happen with Nico anyway. So Nico accepts it. It's like, it's basically sucking her life force out a la um, Renezme in Twilight um, when it, Bella was pregnant with her. Like it's basically like sucking her life force out like a vampire baby parasite. Eric goes in and is like, basically trying to talk to Nico, but she's suffering and all this other stuff. Anyway, he turns on the thing and then they go back to earth and then somehow they get the thing out of Nico. Then Nico and Cass are there and then suddenly they're transported somewhere else. And then Ava, as in the Akaya are like, how dare you X, Y, and Z. Like just starts insulting humanity because they always have to have some weird, like humanity is gross, like argument in these movies when they're an intelligent life form. How dare you think that you're better than us or that you're worthy of negotiation. Then slowly uh, the coding works. Anyway, the season ends with the Akaya gone apparently, just gone, the artifact explodes. All of their communications are down, but then suddenly all these other communications start coming in and apparently it's all these other alien life forms saying greetings and or thank you for getting rid of the Akaya. How would they know that it was Earth? <laughs> How would they know? Also side note, it's like you guys couldn't have done that sooner. Anyway, the season ends with like a really, you know, like we're gonna go back out into space and all this other stuff. Cass is gonna be in charge of the next command. I know she's been through a lot, but like, mm, I feel like there's some more therapy needed to happen before she's in charge of a crew. If there's a season three, I will be genuinely shocked. Um, please don't. If anything, start with a whole new crew, frankly. Like honestly, done with this crew. This crew is bad. Oh yeah, uh, Zayn and Bernie are engaged at the end of season two and there's that. There's so much that they tried to cover, but they did it so rapid fire that I don't care about most of it. All you really need to know is that the Akai are apparently dead because of 
a coding thing. I don't get why they couldn't have done that with Yara's coding, considering Yara was part Akayan code. I don't know why they couldn't affect that coding then, but I mean, I guess they had to do it with the injured Akaya because the Akaya had to get back to the artifact to heal itself on Earth, I think. I don't know, but that's what basically what happened. They also wanted the Salvara to be destroyed because Salvara apparently was the only one with the neutrino weapon. It's like, could they not have made more neutrino weapons to destroy the Akaya? It's this whole thing. Anyway, um, the show is bad. Please don't watch it. I hope, if anything, my video genuinely deterred you from watching this show. It's not good. Again, the other alien species was better and more fun. Should have done that. Same with Gabriel. That's a whole, that's a whole, at least half a season story arc. Not one episode, you know? Like, I, I'm done. Who knows where Yara is floating in space in William's subcode. Did you watch Another Life? Did you watch Another Life season two? Are you mad that I didn't like the show? Were you the 1% that liked the show? I don't know. Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, Swell Shenanigans podcast. Go ahead and check that out down below. My plushie campaign is still up and running. Go ahead and check it out. Don't forget, I also have merch. Uh, buy a little swell for your desk or for your couch buddy, you know? Uh, she's fun and cute and basically life-size, practically. Also, it's a cute little ball shape. Look at me, I'm a little ball. So fun. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also support me on Patreon, let me listen down below. Like to follow me on social media, that'll be up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. I've been writing a lot of horror lately, but clearly I need to get into writing more sci-fi because some of these ideas that they have, they're not bad, but they're executed poorly. Thank you, Alan, Alexis, Brandon, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty, One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Fuckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Joker, Ray, Joe, John, N, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Chris, and Lamb, Lassie, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matt, Matt, O, Matt, U, S, Mimo, The Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Pen, Pralik, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Siler, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Zendry.